In this video, we will learn how to make high quality PCBs at home and discover five secrets to fabricate sharp, nice and glorious PCBs. PCBs with high resolution, capable to mount very tiny components on it. I know you have seen plenty of videos about PCB and how to make it at home by yourself, but you couldn't make a nice and sharp one. And many times you fail or your PCB got errors. Sometimes short circuits may appear in your PCB. Sometimes tracks are bricked or shapes are deformed. And final PCB is not much glorious. In this video, we will relearn how to make PCBs by photoresist dry film method at home. And in the same time, I will tell you five secrets to make nice, sharp, and glorious PCBs at home by yourself. Please stay with me in the rest of this video. First step in making PCBs by photoresist dry film method is to design and make PCB film. Something like this. Two of our secrets to make nice and sharp PCBs are latent in the heart of the film and its design. I will discuss about them later in this video. But for now, it is better to talk about two major categories of PCB fabrication methods. They are positive and negative methods. In positive methods, black area of the film forms copper covered area of the final PCB and white or transparent area of the film forms clean or dielectric parts of the final PCB. A well-known example of positive method is tonal transfer method. In contrast with positive methods, there is negative methods which black parts of the film forms clean or dielectric parts of the final PCB and white or transparent area of the film forms copper covered area of the final PCB. First secret is the method type you use. If you are making PCB by a positive method like Turner transfer method, I have bad news for you. In most cases, quality of handmade PCBs in negative methods are much better than positive methods and you should reconsider the method you are using in PCB fabrication. One of best and most easy examples of negative method is photoresist dry film method, the method I am using in this video. Let's jump into the software and start making PCB film. This is Altium Designer, a powerful and beautiful software for designing PCB. First of everything, I drew up a schematic and converted to PCB in Altium Designer environment. After placement of components, it is time to draw up tracks and other stuff.
The second and third secrets are in this stage of process. Second secret is to use polygons and connect them to the ground net. Polygons are important not only for PCB fabrication quality, but to reduce noise signals and save time in etching process. You may wonder why polygons affect quality of PCB. Polygons speed up etching process by reducing total amount of copper to be etched. And it is obvious, if it done fast, it have less time to deform the shapes and break the lines. Many deformations in PCB lines and shapes are because the board exposed to etching liquid for a long time. Third secret to make admirable PCB is to set proper clearance. Minimum distance between copper covered areas of a PCB is called clearance and in Altium Designer it is super easy to set or change clearance in PCB file. Default value of clearance in Altium Designer is 10 mils, which is very hard to deal with in handmade PCBs. Then we have to change value of clearance to at least 30 mils to optimize final PCB. To do this, in design menu, click on rules and in left hand tree view menu, find clearance under electrical category. And here set minimum clearance to 30 mils. Then click apply and OK. After that, maybe it be necessary to do some adjustment or changes in design. If so, then do it. If a pad or track or component become green, it means that there is an error. Error may be in clearance or other settings. In this case, the error is because of changing clearance. To fix these errors after adjusting clearance, simply right click on board. In polygon actions menu, click on repair all. Now it is time to export film printing file this way. Press Ctrl key plus P. And then set these parameters. Printer to Microsoft print to PDF. Number of copies is one. Color set to mono. Paper size to your preferred paper size and a scale to 100%. Then click refresh or press F5. Then you can see the result here. You can zoom on the page and see the film. This is not our final film. We should click on here, pages tab, and double click on multi-layer composite print. And here, uh, right click on top overlay and delete the layer, top layer, delete the layer, this is ok, this is ok, uh, delete bottom overlay, keep out layer is ok, and refresh the film, we have to delete mechanical layers and then refresh the film or press F5 this is ok after that we need holes on pads click on multi-layer composite print and here you can check the show holes option and then refresh it again this is ok and this is our last film click on print save it somewhere with some name save it as pdf and then open exported pdf file in photoshop this is our film then create a blank A5 paper. Click on File, New, and set it here, A5. 
with this resolution and these settings. Okay, then drag the film into the page. Then you can rotate the film like here with Ctrl T and with your mouse. Here press Enter. Then you can copy the film. Right click on layers and click merge visible. Then you can press Ctrl plus I to make the film negative. Then clean unnecessary black areas and finally print it. You can print the film on transparent paper or tracing paper or on an ordinary paper. If you are going to print on an ordinary paper, you have to pour some baby oil on the paper after printing the film to make the film visible on both sides of paper. In photoresist dry film method, printer type is no matter. You can print the film using both inkjet or laser jet printers. The PCB film is ready now and we are ready to go to next step. After printing the film, cut it in actual size. Take a piece of bare copper clad board and draw cut lines on it, then cut it by blunt edge of a cutter. Here is the blunt edge. The surface of these boards usually is oxidized during a storage and we have to use sandpaper to remove copper oxide from surface of the board to get clean and shining appearance. Then clean surface of board using acetone and a tissue napkin to remove residual particles. Next step is to cut a piece of photoresist dry film. Critical point is to store rest of photoresist film in absolute dark place. If not, it will be corrupted. After that, we should paste the film to board surface. Most easy way to do that is by using electrical iron. You can do that by using electrical iron, but the best way is to stick it using laminator machine.
I use two piece of tape like this to remove film protecting layer and then put the film on the board. Look at these roughnesses here. I had to remove photoresist dry film and repeat process again because of these roughnesses. With help of tissue napkin and acetone, the old dry film can be easily removed. I use another piece of copper clad board to protect main copper clad board from roughnesses. I have to repeat whole lamination process again and then it is ready for continue the main process. It's okay, roughness is become on protected copper clad board and main copper clad board is perfect. Next step is to put PCB film on photoresist dry film. By using some baby oil or sewing machine oil, we can make more transparency on our PCB film. Using these pieces of glass, we can tighten wall sandwich and avoid gap between films. This is perfect. Now we can jump into next step, toasting the sandwich. Our sandwich is ready to toast and now we are ready to know four secret. Four secret is flatness. Sometimes copper clad board is not completely flat and it causes softness of shapes and deforming final PCB tracks and stuff. For example, this one is not completely flat, it is curvy, something like this. To avoid this problem, it is recommended to check the clad board before trying to make a PCB out of it. Other thing which may cause same problem is gap between PCB film and photoresist dry film. To fix this gap, we need pressure. Using these pieces of glass, we can tighten whole sandwich together and avoid gap between films. For activating photoresist film, you can expose the sandwich into sunlight. But I use my handmade UV light box to activate the film. I just put the sandwich in the box, then set the lamps and time, then run the device. Now this is ready to continue fabrication process. Next step is to wash the board and remove inactive area of photoresist film. For this I have to remove second protection layer of the film by using a piece of tape and float the board in sodium bicarbonate or baking soda solution and rub it with a brush.
Be sure to wear a mask, put on gloves, and use eye protection glasses when you are working with chemicals. This step is very important. Be patient and careful to remove all inactive photoresist materials. If not, you may be in trouble in next steps. Yes, it is down. Now I am going to wash the board and etch it using iron tricolorite solution to remove unwanted coppers from the board. I will put cool water in plastic or glassy container and add proper amount of ferric chloride powder into it and mix it carefully with water. Now I am gonna float the board in etching solution and shake the solution slowly. It will take several minutes to completely etch the board. Yes, it is down and our nice board is getting ready. Now we can wash the board and after that we have to remove active photoresist from board. There is plenty of methods to remove the active film out of board, like sandpaper, acetone or heat. But most easy one is to use sodium hydroxide or caustic soda solution. To do that, firstly put a little water in a container and put the board in the container and then make solution on a glass and pour the solution on the board and wait for the magic to happen. You may wonder why I put a little water on container and then pour solution on the board. Because the board's body, I mean the electric part of the board, is sensitive to caustic soda. The final board is ready, nice and sharp and high quality with high resolution shapes. Now we are ready for washing the board and drilling holes and assemble components on it and test it.
Look at this beauty. It is done, the process is over, but the fifth secret is remain uncovered. The fifth secret is to use fresh and high quality materials like baking and caustic soda, copper clapboard, etching liquid, and especially, especially photoresist rifle. Make solutions only when you are going to use them and don't reuse any of them. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.